Um, this is a quick example of what a power plant would look like. Usually you have some type of primary source. The primary source usually produces heat. The heat goes into water, which then boils, right? The water, when you add heat to the water, what happens? The potential energy in the liquid is going to increase until it turns into a gas, and then the energy can go purely into the kinetic energy of these molecules. And when these molecules are zipping around all over the place, they're going to go up through here. They're going to run into the turbines and cause the turbines to spin, right? And when the turbines spin, they are going to turn your electricity generator, which is created with electricity and magnetism, which we'll talk about when we do chapter five. And this thing, this coil spinning inside of a magnet then creates the electricity that gets sent to your home. That, that um, those water molecules, once they transfer energy to the turbines, then they will go down. They'll be finished condensing because the energy is being taken out of them. As energy comes out, they, the gas molecules slow down, they lose potential energy, they become liquid again, and they come right back into the boiler, and the process continues and continues and continues. Almost, well, all of the fossil fuels work somewhat in this manner, and the nuclear fuel does as well, right? Is it's used to create heat, which then is used to boil the water and turn the turbines. So this is a very important idea um, as we go forward, recognizing exactly what's happening there, okay? Now, uh, a couple of things to, to consider as we're looking at this. What are the energy transfers that take place as we go through this process? Well, we have internal energy, which was in the primary source. The internal energy is, uh, the, the primary source is usually burned or whatever else, which releases that as heat. The heat is transferred into the water, which goes into potential energy, right? The potential energy allows it to break some of those bonds and become a gas. And then it also goes into kinetic energy. So we start with internal, and then it goes into heat, which then goes into the water, which increases the potential energy, and it also increases the kinetic energy. That then goes into the turbines. The kinetic energy pushes on these turbines, turning it into the rotational kinetic energy, right? Because the turbines aren't actually moving anywhere, they're just spinning. So rotational kinetic energy, which then turns it into electrical energy, and that is then transferred to us. So it's important to recognize, we, we've talked about conservation of energy and those things, so we want to make sure that we're noting that as we go forward, what types of energy transfers are taking place? How do we know that the energy is being conserved? Of course, through all of this, energy will be lost to the system because no system is perfect. Um, one of the things that it does say here that I didn't mention as we went through is that it talks about superheated steam, right? That just means that the steam is hotter than your normal 100 degrees, 110 degrees. Why do you want the steam hotter? Well, Hopefully you recognize that the reason why we want the steam hotter is because hotter temperature is proportional to kinetic energy, right? That's what we talked about in our thermal unit. And more temperature means more kinetic energy. More kinetic energy means you're going to get the turbines to spin faster. Turbines spinning faster means more electricity generated, all right? So uh, I guess one of the other things I should mention, a turbine, okay? Turbine is a scientific term, okay? A turbine is a specific device that changes kinetic energy into rotational energy, okay? It has to turn kinetic into rotational, all right? Um, what are some other devices? You know, while, while we're here, what are some other devices that change types of energy, okay? I want you to think about that. Take, take two minutes, pause the video, and think of other devices, other mechanical devices or otherwise, that change one type of energy into another type of energy, just like a turbine. A turbine takes forward kinetic energy, that internal kinetic energy of the gas, and turns it into rotational energy. Okay, you've got another one right here. Okay, I'll give you one more hint. You got the generator, right? The generator takes that rotational energy and turns it into electrical energy. 
All right, so take a minute, two minutes, see if you can come up with other mechanical devices that turn one type of energy into another type of energy. Pause. All right, so hopefully you paused it and you came up with some other ideas. I wanna share a couple with you. Um, one is a microphone. What does a microphone do, right? A microphone, you take sound energy, right? Which is the vibration of the air particles. And what does it do? It turns that vibration of air particles into an electrical energy. That's how it goes through the cord to your speaker. Speaking of which, what does the speaker do? The speaker takes electrical energy and turns it back into your speaker amplifier, whatever it is, turns it back into sound energy, right? Those are specific mechanical objects that take energy of one type and turn it into another. Uh, how about a light bulb? A light bulb takes electrical energy and turns it into light energy, right? Um, how about the opposite? What's the other way? How do we take light and turn it into electrical energy? That's your solar cell, your photovoltaic cell, your, your PV, right? Your photovoltaic cell actually takes light energy and turns it into the flow of electrons, into electricity, right? So think of other things like that as, as you are kind of going through your daily business. What, what are some other mechanical things that can change the type of energy from one form to another, all right? Which are cleaner, electric cars or gasoline cars? I'll give you 30 seconds, pause it, give yourself 30 seconds, and then choose an answer. Pause. All right, what answer did you give? Well, my thought is the answer is C. The answer depends on where the electricity is coming from. If the electricity is coming from a coal power plant, that means you had to burn coal to create the electricity for your car. Is that cleaner than, boil than burning gasoline in the car? Well, that's something, a debate for another day. But the fact is, is that if you're burning it in a coal plant, then you are turning it into electricity, which then turns into the energy of your car, which means you are having more changes of energy. And remember, anytime you change from one energy form to another, it cannot be 100% efficient. You're going to lose energy. And so if your electric car runs off of electricity that comes from an electric or natural gas or uh, coal power plant or, or oil, burning oil, any of those uh, fossil fuels, your car actually causes more damage to the environment than a regular old gasoline car, okay? If the energy, if the electricity comes from nuclear power or renewable energies, then yes, it's cleaner. But that's something that you should think about when you consider whether electric cars are cleaner or better than gasoline cars. Where are you getting that energy from? All right. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, Sankey diagrams. Okay, now, Sankey diagrams are kind of neat. Um, they really just show us what's happening to energy. You know, I just mentioned in that previous video that anytime you go from one type of energy to another, you lose energy, right? So this right here is a Sankey diagram for coal energy production going to a normal incandescent light bulb. So this is talking about one of those light bulbs that has like the wire in between like this. This is talking about where does the energy go starting from this big old block of ugly coal until it gets to your light bulb and how much actually gets used. Now the nice thing about a Sankey diagram is it's very, very visual, right? You can see here at the beginning in this blue, the blue is useful energy, okay? So in the beginning, I have the coal, which has a certain amount of energy, right? But then what happens? I burn the coal, burn the coal, and that energy becomes released, right? It goes through that process that we talked about a couple of slides ago with boiling the water and turning the turbines, all that. That is actually only about 35% efficient, okay? So 65% of that energy is lost. And you can see that here. This is 35%. This is 65%. So 65% of the energy is gone, and I'm left with 35% right here. That's how much actually turns into electricity. That doesn't mean that's how much useful energy you're actually getting out. That actually just means that's how much you're getting out of the power plant. Okay. Now, once it gets out of the power plant, 
you have to get it from the power plant to your house and there's resistance in those wires, you lose some energy. They do what they can to minimize that electricity loss, but you're losing two in, tra in transmission, you're losing two in distribution. That's where it gets split up into individual neighborhoods and and uh, you know trying to get it to these power sites in, in individual areas. And then you lose about 1% inside of the wires inside of your house right once it gets to your house you start to lose some some energy as the electricity goes through the wires in your wall so you can see how each one of these has a thin wire uh, not a thin wire but a thin piece that's representing two percent that's representing two percent that's representing one percent so by the time we actually get to the lamp you've got it down to about 30 percent okay so we're now down to 30 percent now, if this is one of these lovely incandescent lamps, right, the ones with the screw on and, and uh, with the wire, those are only about 10% efficient. That means only about 10% of the light actually, 10% of the energy actually goes to making visible light. If you've ever felt one of these or put your hand close to one, they are hot. That is because most of the electricity goes to heating up that filament. The way that it works is that you heat it up really hot and eventually it gets so hot that it starts to glow. The electrons start to jump around. As the electrons jump around, they release light. But that only happens after they get really, really hot. And that's what you're seeing here is that 90% of the energy is lost as heat, right? So once you lose that heat, you're down to 2% of the energy that's left and well, if you got a lampshade on, it's gonna absorb some of the light and you end up getting 1% that you can read your book by. Now, that's why most houses now don't use these incandescent light bulbs and why you shouldn't use them. Um, even if you think that you should because they're really, really cheap, okay, buy the slightly more expensive LED lights because the LED lights are significantly more efficient. Uh, I don't have a number for you, sadly, but uh, I'd say that they're at least 70% uh, efficient now or something. It's significant, right? You're not going to be losing 28% of the energy anymore. You're going to be losing. You're going to be losing half of that, if if that. I mean, much, 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 much less. Um, so the Sankey diagram would then look slightly different, right? In a energy saving bulb, you might get, let's say 10%. See how the width of it is gonna represent, this is gonna be my 10%. So if I used an energy saving bulb and I said that I'm losing about 10% here, then I would have 20% going over this way. I'd still lose one to the lampshade, but then I would be getting significantly more energy out right here. I actually get about 19% out to my light bulb, okay? And so that is what it would look like if I changed it for an energy-saving bulb, right? And so you can see how we start with this wide box that then gets smaller and smaller as we lose energy, as we progress through the steps. These are... Uh, you have to be able to read a Sankey diagram to be able to see um, uh, just how energy is gained or lost throughout a system. You'll be able to answer efficiency questions with this and, and other things. All right. Um, this is the, a, a uh, drawing of natural gas. Natural gas is slightly different than coal and slightly different than nuclear and slightly different than, than the oil because natural gas being a gas, we actually can add in a second turbine here, okay? A second turbine called a gas turbine. And so the gas turbine, this, this, this part up here is the same thing as the coal, right? You boil the water, water goes through, uh, turns the turbine, right? All those other things, right? Similar, similar type of process. The natural gas, because it's a gas, can actually turn a second turbine, which makes things a little bit more efficient because you're not losing quite as much. Uh, you remember with the coal, we lost 65%. It was only about 35% efficient. 
Well, that was coal, right? Here is one for the uh, natural gas, right? And you'll notice that the initial part, right? So here's the, the total energy in the gas, right? That's like this part right here, the energy from the primary source. Um, we lose some of it as heat here, right? That still looks like it's maybe about 30 to 35%, right? Which is basically about how efficient this type of uh, water turbine system is, right? The difference is when the gas is heated up, we can further get some more energy from it using the gas turbine. And so we get maybe another 10 to 15% efficiency out of it, right? Which means that we get maybe 40 to 50% efficiency out of the natural gas. So that's just one thing that, that you should be aware of is that natural gas is a little bit more efficient because we can use a second turbine, second generator, due to it being a gas, not being a solid like the coal or, or anything like that. Okay, um, awesome. I think that's it for us today. Um, go back through and, and look at it again if you need to. Uh, I've got some problems I want you to work through. And uh, next class, uh, we'll, we'll continue.